This video is part of this year's Roots Power of the Unseen theme, which celebrates the complex world beneath our feet and seeks to inspire a new appreciation for the unnoticed yet vital parts of our ecosystem. Hello, I am Patrick from Naples Botanical Garden, and I'm here in the Bueller Family Foundation Enabling Garden looking for our sweet potatoes. You won't see them growing above ground because sweet potatoes are root vegetables and are only found growing under the soil. These tubers are enlarged roots and are where extra sugar produced during photosynthesis is stored. However, not all root vegetables are tubers, and not all tubers are formed from roots. Carrots, beets, and turnips? Well, they're tap roots, and they are the main roots that other roots grow from, and potatoes are actually tubers formed from underground portions of stem instead of roots. This is also the case for yams. Now, if you're thinking, aren't yams and sweet potatoes the same thing? The short answer is no. In North America, sweet potatoes are sometimes called yams, but actual yams are much larger, and their skin is rough, looks like bark, and is difficult to peel. Also, the flesh is starchy and not sweet. Yams are originally from Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean. Sweet potatoes have their roots in tropical America and have grown to become an important food crop in many other areas of the world. But when did people first start using sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes hail from Central and South America. They were domesticated at least 5,000 years ago, making them easier for people to grow and use. By the 1400s, sweet potatoes had spread outwards into the islands of the Pacific Ocean thanks to the Polynesians, the first inhabitants of those islands. The spread of sweet potatoes to Europe, Asia, and Africa was started by the Spanish in the 1500s. More recent history has seen sweet potatoes migrate onto many restaurant menus as a substitute for french fries. Though rooted in Central and South America, today sweet potatoes grow around the world. But how are they used? The sweet potato, or tuber, often seen in supermarkets is the most commonly used part of the plant. These tasty tubers range in color inside and out, from orange to white to purple, and are used from root to leaf to feed people around the world. Root to leaf? Yes, more than the tuber can be eaten. The leaves, as you see here, can be used like spinach, either eaten raw in a salad or cooked to release extra flavor. The sweet potato itself is used to make both sweet and savory dishes. No wonder this plant is a staple around the world. Being subtropical, sweet potatoes do exceptionally well here in Southwest Florida. In fact, they love the sun, heat, and rain of our summer months. You may have spotted them growing in the garden during that time, but we don't just plant them so we can have them with Thanksgiving dinner. Sweet potatoes actually work for us. See, sweet potatoes make excellent cover crops. The vines grow densely enough to keep our soil cool in the hottest of months and prevent weed seeds from growing. Also, when it is too hot to grow other vegetables, sweet potatoes not only thrive, but come through to save the day and soil. Now, sweet potatoes are typically grown from slips rather than from seeds. We typically plant sweet potato slips in May, though you can plant them anytime during the spring up until June. And then the vines will help keep the raised beds cool. We have the raised beds here covered with them in the Bueller Family Foundation Enabling Garden. After at least four months, sweet potatoes are ready to harvest. Now, it takes a little digging. They'll produce a sizable tuber just in time for fall festivities. Make sure you keep in mind, after digging up sweet potatoes, they need to cure for about two weeks. To cure them, place them somewhere warm with high humidity and little to no sunlight. The curing process allows the starches to change to sugars and the tubers to become tasty and sweet. Sweet potatoes, often thought of as a side dish, have had quite a journey from their wild origins in tropical America to becoming a food staple around the world. They, along with other root vegetables, show that nutritional value can be found underground and highlight the importance of not forgetting what is unseen. Next time you're eating, take a moment to think about where your food, especially fruits and vegetables, came from. Thanks for watching and see you in the garden.